welcoming you to today's lesson in social studies with me, your teacher, Ian Haradinda, who is a grade 6 teacher at Fountain School in Kasama of Northern Province. Now, what do I have to offer today in social studies? We are still on the topic weather and climate. Weather and climate. Now, it is important to note or to revise, you know, something that we looked at the previous day or the previous time we began looking at it, weather and climate. So what did we discuss on weather and climate? We defined what weather is. We said weather is the condition of the atmosphere of a place at a given time. We said weather is the condition of the atmosphere of a place at a given time. Then we also looked at you know, quite a number of instruments that are found where at the weather station because we say a weather station it is simply a place where all instruments used to measure weather are done what? Kept. Then not only the weather station, we say at the same weather station there is a box. This box is called a Stevenson screen. We say this box is called Stevenson screen. So we say this box or this Stevenson screen is a box where four instruments used to measure whether are kept in this box. Now, under weather, just in the previous lesson, we said there are you know, a good number of descriptions of weather. How can you describe weather? We said weather can be described as hot, cool, warm, sunny, cloudy, and windy, to mention but a few. I'm emphasizing on that. We said, how can you describe weather? Because I remember in grade one and somewhere in grade two, or even preschool, some of you, your teacher, were asking, your teachers were asking you to say, what is the weather today? Who can tell me the weather for today? You were saying, no, teacher, it's cold, it's cool, it's warm, just like that. All those words you were bringing out, they were under the descriptions of weather. Now, from the descriptions of weather, we also said there are elements of weather. There are elements of weather. We say there are just seven elements of weather. This is where we say we have temperature, we have rainfall, we have cloud cover, we have humidity, we have uh, a pressure, okay, the one which is called atmospheric pressure and others. So these are some of the things that we looked at the other day. Now today, of course, uh, maybe one last thing. We also looked at temperature, where we defined what temperature is. We said temperature is how cold or hot the air is. Or you say temperature is the hotness or coldness of air or the body. We also said the units for temperature are in degrees Celsius. Then we also say the instrument that is used to measure temperature. They use thermometers and these thermometers they are in two types. We said we have maximum and minimum thermometer. Then we also looked at one important thing to say there are lines that are drawn on the map joining places of the same temperature. We say those lines are called isothems. We say these lines are called isothems. So basically this is what we looked at the other day when we looked at weather. Then when we introduced weather. So today now I'm inviting you to another important lesson where now we're going to look at rainfall. So in other words we are saying today we shall look at rainfall. Now, it is important also to define what rainfall is. I'll give you two definitions of rainfall.
married for, such that you just pick which one is maybe very simple for you. So, ready for can be defined as ready for. Ready for is the amount of. Ready for is the amount of precipitation. Precipitation, the amount of precipitation in the atmosphere. Okay, so we are saying the first definition is rainfall is the amount of precipitation of or in the atmosphere at any given place. Then the other definition you can say rainfall. Is the amount of rain in the atmosphere? The reason why I've given you two definitions, maybe some of you, you may have, you know, a challenge of maybe trying to remember the word precipitation. So in place of precipitation, you can say the amount of rain in the atmosphere. Now, for rainfall, it is also important to know the units. What are the units of rainfall? In other words, rainfall is measured in millimeters. It is measured in millimeters. So, the units for rainfall are millimeters. Once rainfall is recorded, at the end of the recordings, they'll say millimeters. So, these are units of rainfall. Then, what do we call an instrument that is used to measure rainfall? The instrument that is used to measure rainfall is called a rain gauge. Be particular with the spelling. So we are saying a rain gauge is an instrument. Evaporation. So, evaporation, the sun will facilitate. 
state, okay, to make that same water which should rise up in the sky. So the sun, the sun will facilitate to make that water to move into the sky. So as the, the water is moving from its liquid state, its liquid state going into the sky, in the sky there, water will move from its liquid state going into gaseous state. When we say gaseous, we mean water which is also involved with gas, in other words, air. So you will not see water moving, okay? You even say, no, oh, that is water which is moving. It will move in form of vapor, okay? Just like we understand sometimes, sometimes when you are cooking or water is boiling, you discover that as you remove the lid, you discover that steam will be coming out. That is the vapor that I'm talking about. So, under the surfaces of the maybe rivers, lakes, you will see that the sun will heat up the water which is in it, dams and other surfaces. And that water will move from liquid to gas. Now, in gaseous form there, it will form, it will cool, okay? It will cool and it condense. Once these two things are there, you will discover that clouds will be formed from the water droplets. And from there, water will still fall back, meaning it will be coming from its gas, okay, gaseous state, into again, which is liquid state. So, this process where water is moving from its liquid state to gaseous state, we are saying the process is called water vapor. Now, when the water in the sky is falling down as rainfall, it will fall through this process called condensation. Condensation. So this is how this same rainfall we are trying to talk about today is formed. It is formed under these two processes. And we are saying evaporation is the change of liquid water into gaseous water which is in form of water vapor okay then as it reaches the sky for us to know to say oh now this is it rain it will undergo some processes of cooling and also condensing okay condense condense thereby it will now fall back as rainfall through this process called condensation where it is coming from its gaseous state in to go to liquid state so this is what we were now looking at now it is important to also note that under rainfall just like you know to take you back a little bit uh, maybe we are saying for temperature we said lines that are drawn on the map on the map joining places of the same Temperature, we say they are called isotherms. Now, today there are also lines that are drawn on the map, joining places of the same rainfall. We are talking about today. What are these lines called? These lines are called iso yes. These lines are called iso yes. So we are saying lines drawn. On the map, the map joining places of the same rainfall or amount of rainfall are called, they are called. Called isoyets. Okay, so the H letter, letter H is silent. So lines drawn on the map joining places of the same rainfall or amount of rainfall in um, 
the precipitation. These lines are called ISO. Yes. Don't forget and don't confuse these lines, please. I must emphasize on that. For temperature, they are called isotherms. For rainfall, they are called ISO. Yes. Now, I want you to take a look at uh, this chart here. Alright, so on this chart, we've seen that there's another definition which is so interesting. We are saying rainfall can be defined as the amount of rain that falls on the on a single occasion in a given place. This definition is not different from the ones we gave at first. So it is also important for you to also have this one. So we are saying rainfall is measured in millimeters. Just like we say to say millimeters are the units for rainfall. Rainfall is measured using an instrument called rain gauge. Here, don't confuse these two things. Sometimes I may ask you to state the units for rainfall. The units are millimeters. Then at the same time, they may ask you to state the instrument. The instrument is a rain gauge. It is called rain gauge. Now, the rain gauge is placed about 30 centimeters above the ground to prevent water from getting into the cylinder, which can give wrong readings. So it is important also because you may just place your rain gauge anywhere. You know, there's a condition here to say, as you place your rain gauge, if you want to have correct readings as the rain is falling down, you need to place it, be, I mean, 30 centimeters above the what? The ground. Why is it important to place 30 meters, I mean, 30 centimeters above the ground? It is to prevent having the what? Or prevent, you know, all the waters that are falling to enter into the cylinder, which can also give you wrong readings. Then, rainfall, just like we said, rainfall is formed as a result of water cycle, where we say that this is the movement of water from the land to the sky and back to the land. We say it begins with evaporation, which takes place when the sun heats up the water surfaces. We say when the sun is, you know, trying to facilitate that water to rise up and in the sky, it will go, you know, through this process called evaporation, where in the sky it will cool and it condense, forming water droplets that was, that those uh, water droplets will become heavy now to form clouds. And once clouds are formed, expect to have this same rainfall that we are talking about. So we say also the lines that are drawn on the map joining places of the same rainfall are called ISO. Yes. So having looked at these things on the chart and all the things that I earlier mentioned, it is important also that I assess you now. So I'm going to write, you know, a few questions on the board so that you attempt them. Right. So here I've written these questions. So make sure you write in a very good handwriting, just like I always emphasize on that. And remember to begin with capital letters as you begin writing your sentences. So the first question says, define the following terms. Define the following terms. We have rainfall. You need to define what rainfall is. Then we have Stevenson screen. We also have weather station. These three terms should be defined. Or you tell the meanings. So, question two says, what do we call the lines drawn on a map joining places of the same amount of rainfall? What do we call the lines drawn on a map joining places of the same amount of rainfall? Then number three, the instrument used to measure rainfall is called the instrument used to measure rainfall is called for rainfall is formed as a result of dash. Rainfall is formed as a result of dash. You tell me you know what brings about rainfall. Then the last question, number five. Rainfall is measured in dash. Here I'm trying to talk about the units. 
what are the units of rainfall. So this is where we end in today's lesson in social studies where we are looking at weather and climate specifically for rainfall. So always remember to, you know, observe everything that I was talking about as you write this lesson. Until next time, I have been your teacher, Ian, who is a grade 6 teacher at Fountain School in Kasama of Northern Province of Zambia. Until next time, bye.